So you're thinking about starting to edit or looking for the right tool that won't break the bank. Perfect, you're in the right place because here we're gonna talk about Capture One Express, which is the free version of Capture One Pro. I'm gonna tell you how good I think it is, who is it aimed for, and also the differences in the feature set between a software like this and a paid version. So I hope with this video to help you decide what you should be looking for and decide what's best for you. E aí, é Manry, a Brazilian photographer living in Italy, and in this channel we talk about photo, video, and tech. And a while ago, I did a video about NX Studio, which is a new software from Nikon that is free and is available to edit raw files only from Nikon files. And then, after doing this video, I decided to take a look around and see what's available on the market and test some other softwares to show you guys also. And one that I found and a lot of people commented about it was Capture One Express, which is a free version of Capture One Pro, which is a very recognized photo editing software that competes with Lightroom. I am, by the way, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, take your chance right now, because here in the channel, I'm doing a lot of videos about editing software and photography in general. So I went on to download Capture One Express and here comes my first warning to you guys. The same way as they do with Capture One Pro, Capture One Express comes specifically for some brands of cameras. So right now it's available only for Nikon, Sony and Fujifilm. So Canon users, I'm sorry, this is not for you. And since it's free, you can have the licenses for all these cameras. So in case you have a Nikon and a Sony camera at home, for example, you're gonna be able to use Capture One Express with both of them. But there's only one problem. It only allows you to use one license at a time, meaning that if you apply the license to use it with Nikon cameras, you won't be able to edit a Sony camera until you replace the license with the Capture One Express for Sony cameras in the software, restart the software, and then you're gonna be able to edit the other one. You're always able to see other raw files, but you cannot edit them. All right, let's go to the computer. I'm gonna show you a little bit how it works, what it has, and what I really missed. All right, let me give you a run through how to get the software and how to begin using it. What you can see on the screen right now is the official Capture One Express page in which it says that it's available for Fujifilm and for Sony, which is really weird because there's the Nikon version also. You have to register on the website, create your account, and then it's gonna ask you which kind of camera do you use and it's going to give you a license for that because after all what you're doing is you're downloading only one software that is going to be able to give you the trial either for Capture One Express for Nikon, Sony or Fuji or for Capture One Pro. It's all inside the same but different licenses. In my case I got the one for Sony which is the camera that I use but the availability of features and everything is the same throughout all of them. So importing the files works more or less like Lightroom does, in which you import the files inside the software, they insert it inside a catalog, and they are not moved in your hard drive. They stay where they are, but then you can see only the folders that are inside the catalog inside this part here. And you can see also the recent imports and everything. So here we are kind of like in the library mode, let's say, of Lightroom, in which you can see the film strip with all the pictures you have in your current catalog or folder that is selected. And also you can rate the pictures with stars, colors, more or less standard. And down here you're gonna notice the other pictures that I tried importing before. So there was this NAV file from a Nikon camera that was working when I had the license for Capture One Express for Nikon properly. Uh, I tried to import a JPEG and saw that it worked, it was fine. These two are Canon files and I'm just gonna switch over here to the develop module, let's say, or where you can edit. And you can see that everything is grayed out. And at first I didn't understand why, what was happening, and suddenly I realized it was because it was a camera that was not supported. And these ones here, this is a DNG file, was my first attempt to try to tri trick the system, it didn't work. And this is a TIFF file, as a TIFF it worked, so I could edit here. But for the purpose of this, I didn't check exactly if there's any difference for the software to be editing TIFF or DNG or whatever else and I didn't want to make an analysis that could be somehow wrong because it wasn't meant exactly for this. So I decided to try only with Sony files just to be sure that I could evaluate it properly. And since I decided to use only Sony files, I chose these three pictures, not because I think they are beautiful or well taken or anything, but because I think they are good examples of what this software can do and the challenges that they offer. So this first one, this car, it has distortion because of the lens that was really, really wide. There's a very distracting background and obviously you saw already that the white balance is totally off. Other one is this one here in the main square of Bologna and we have a lot of difference, between, a lot of dynamic range between the lower part that is darker and the sky and the light of the sun entering. 
So I think it can be quite challenging and really good. And the other one is this that is severely underexposed, but it has a lot of potential. And you're gonna notice that down here in the film strip, you can see that there's this small icon on top of all of them. And this means that I created a variant, which is kind of like the virtual copy on Lightroom in which you can create several different versions for the same picture and edit them differently. There are other ways of doing it in Lightroom also, but anyway, here is the, the way that you should do it. And this is the original. I'm gonna show you already the final version, which was this. This is the original here and this is where I got, and this is the original here, and this is how far I took it. Later, I'm gonna show you what I did with these pictures also on Lightroom, but for now, let's take this one as an example. And just by the way, just running over what's on the top here, you have just like your import, undo and redo functions. In the middle, you have some specific tools that you can use wherever you are. So it's just like grabbing and moving the picture around. You can rotate it, you can use the white balance picker. Or here on the right, you can see the before and after. I mean, this is the original, so there's no change right now. You can activate the grid. There's an exposure warning that should tell you if something is severely underexposed or overexposed. Right now in the picture, there's nothing. If you go way overboard, you're gonna begin seeing something red here on the overexposed parts. I'll just come back and I'll turn this off because I don't want it right now. Here are the primaries in general in which you can get like the exposure, contrast, brightness, all this basic stuff. But there is one difference already here that is not present in many other softwares, which is besides from having the exposure slider, they have also this brightness slider. And as you can see, I'm gonna push both of them way over to the right and check the histogram while I do this. So see that while I'm here, the histogram is already all over the place, kind of like covering all the spectrum. And when I begin to go a little bit more, it begins to crush everything on the white part. And you can see on the histogram and you can see in the picture also what's happening. So we're just crushing white on everything. The sky is gone already. If I turn on the exposure warning, you can see that the mess is already happening and you can just destroy the picture by doing this. Okay, if I do the same thing with the brightness, it kind of like pushes more from the middle, more from the mid-tones. And then you can see that it just begins to come and then it goes over here and that's the limit. So it just pushes everything up, but a little bit more gently. So if you have something really severely underexposed, like I had on this one, for example, you can totally bring up the exposure a little bit to try to bring everything all together more to the white and then begin to fine tune it with the brightness a little bit. And right below they put this high dynamic range panel in which you have highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. So this means that we're splitting the spectrum into four parts and like this you can selectively change whatever you want. So for example if you want to reduce a little bit the brightness of the sky you could push the highlights a little bit down, light down here is a little bit darker so you could push the shadows up a little bit. Whites, for example, if you check the histogram, we are crushing the whites way before the white point. So we could even push them a little bit more here to the side. And we got the blacks here that we can also pull back a little bit to have a little bit more contrast and looks fine like this. Below you have clarity, which is gonna help you with the definition of the lines of everything, especially for architecture. Usually it's really, really good. And what I found is that these two, if you've used Lightroom before, these two are usually clarity is like clarity properly on, on Lightroom and structure works quite a lot like the texture slider on, on Lightroom. And if you pull this up all the way, I'm gonna always show you like this, like pulling everything to the extreme so that you can clearly see what's going on on the screen. So this really pushes the line, really adds a lot of contrast to the edges of everything and structure works a little bit differently. So see that the lines didn't affect as much in this one, but if I zoom in and to do this, you just have to use the scroll on the mouse up and down. Uh, you see that the textures are getting so hard on this. You can get a lot of detail from the faces of things. And if you go back, you're gonna begin seeing everything blurry. Sharpening is something that works on a little bit of both. And here I found that it works quite good, but I didn't find a way of masking it like I can do on Lightroom, in which I can define exactly where I want it to be applied. By the way, when you pass the mouse over the screen, there's something really interesting that Capture One Pro and Express do, which is showing you the RGB and luminance values. You can see up there, like for example, if I just position it on the sky here, more or less, you can see the values for red, green, blue, and luma. And this can be really useful when you're changing colors mainly, because then you can have an idea of what color cast you're having somewhere and what do you need to change to change the color? Because sometimes it's not very visually 
easy to understand what's going on on a picture and doing like this is so easy. And I'll just go back here to the quick tab. And by the way, you're gonna be seeing that the panels that exist on the quick tab, they exist also in other places. They kind of like organized everything to be able to easily access what you would normally be using most in one single tab. And then you can access everything later in each one of them. Things kind of like repeat themselves a little bit. So you're gonna see, for example, if you just go over here, here we're gonna have the styles and presets, which work kind of like the presets on Lightroom. Then you come over to this kind of like lensy icon here and you have again crop like you had here on the quick edit mode. So here you can just like choose how you wanna crop it and then you can just select here one shape or you can just create yours and you can just crop the image, whatever you prefer. You can change how the grid looks like, you can rotate the image. And then we got this panel here for the lens correction in which the software in theory should recognize which lens you're using and correct the vignetting and correct also the distortion. And in these three shots, I used different lenses. And this one was an adapted Canon lens, so it's normal that it didn't understand which lens it was. In this one here, it was a Samyang lens, a wide 14 millimeter, and it does not exist in the list that you can see here inside the software. The only one of the three in which the software recognized automatically was this one that was shot with the Tamron 28 to 75, and this was okay. As you can see, there is a bunch of lenses in here, but I couldn't find some of the lenses that I have. For example, I could try to pinpoint which Canon lens it was that I used, but it doesn't exist here on this list. So not always it's gonna work, but you can still correct any kind of distortion or anything manually if you want. All right, next up you get the exposure tab. And then we have again the exposure properly in the high dynamic range that we already talked about. And then it's got two different panels to correct the brightness and the contrast of the image. And usually what we see is the curves, which actually is not even available in many free software. So this is a very cool feature that they have here. And then you have also the levels, which is another way to fine tune everything here. So, but one thing that is interesting about this feature is that you can quickly define what's gonna be the final contrast of this image. Like where do you want it to start with? So for example, if you just select this picker here and tell the software, what is your black point? Like what do you imagine should be black? So let's say for example, this deep shadows here. Okay, so it's set here that the black now is six. And then the most important part is, let's pick this one here, which should be the white point. And let's say what should be white here. Let's say, for example, this cloud. And you can see that right now it's kind of grayish. So actually this means that we should probably push our things a little bit to the right. And this is what's gonna happen when I click. So not only it pushes things a little bit to the right, but also pushes the white point to the left, as you can see here. So you can see that now this is the contrast of our image. So you can see that now we have a very well distributed histogram all over. And then you can fine tune the way you want using these curves here, which are going to allow you to just correct the brightness and the contrast in all the parts of the image. Now Capture and Express doesn't have the individual channels curves, the red, green and blue. It just has the RGB curve properly. Capture One Pro does have everything separately, actually has many other tools for color correction also. All right, let's go to the next one and this is the colors panel. And here you can see that the software detected what was the camera and also you have the possibility to change the white balance, which we've seen before. And also a color editor, kind of like the HSL panel on Lightroom in which you can click just each color that you want. These are the perceived colors on the image and you can change the hue. Let's choose something that actually exists. So for example, I could mess up with the blue here and just pull it over to the left and make it a little bit more cyan or to the right and make it a little bit more purple. And you can just go over like this to each individual color. I and I didn't find a way to see all of them at the same time. If you know how it is, just tell me in the comments here. Now, one interesting hidden feature that I found here were these three little dots here on the right that actually open a new panel in which actually you can say how much the software should select of that color. So let's say, for example, that I choose the blue like I was doing before. You can actually now correct how much of the blue you actually want the slider to affect. So if I do something very, very tight like this, it's gonna select just the blue. And you can see that it's selecting everything around here and even the edges of the clouds are not being selected anymore. They're just gray right now. And then if I begin to expand it a bit more, you can see that the things that have blue reflected on them begin to appear, I begin to cross over into the purple. Let me see how far can I go with this. Okay, so this is the maximum. It doesn't allow me to go any further. And here's the maximum also. So this way I'm selecting everything from mid cyan until mid purples more or less. And here I can choose this smoothness. So how hard is gonna be this selection? So let me just apply this here and I'm gonna try to change the hue on the sky again. 
and you can see that now it changes like everything even the clouds that has like some reflected color cast on them they change also the color so you can use this to fine tune how much of that selection you want it's kind of like a small step in between this free software and a paid software which would have much more control and selective control over the colors but it's really nice to have this here and then you can also enable black and white and some people find it strange that actually you have color sliders inside the black and white part but that is because you can still change everything according to the previous colors so let's disable this here for a second and let's just see for example that the curtains here are all red so when i come up here and i begin selecting the red slider you can see that all the windows over there they change also because we're affecting everything that was red before i'm just gonna leave it off for a while and just let's just see the next one which is gonna be the sharpening so again the same thing noise reduction so if you have noise in some part of the shadows or everything you can adjust here and then by the end you have another kind of like library module again in which you have metadata and you can add keywords and everything to be able to find images a little bit faster okay so let's go back to the other pictures and take a look at some before and afters so back to this car picture here i'm just going to do one thing edit and i'm going to show you the final version which is the white balance because this one was totally off and i didn't show you and if I just click anywhere here and Capture and Express does a fantastic job in what was a disaster of a picture. And then, of course, later on, I just adjusted exposure, contrast, brightness. I used everything you got here to be able to get to this final image. And my conclusion is that I was very satisfied with where I could get with just a free software. It was really, really good. It managed to correct the white balance really well. It managed to correct the brightness, to correct some overexposed parts. I adjusted a little bit the colors and the reflections on the car. So for me, it worked really good. So if it's like that, what did I miss to finish editing this picture? Well, there were a lot of things that I wanted to do, but more selectively in this picture and also about the colors and the reflections and everything. And that I couldn't change here because Capture One Express was just finished by that point. I couldn't do anything else. So I pushed the same picture into Lightroom. I'm going to show you how is the final version of the same picture that I did in Lightroom. Now you're seeing on the screen both of them together. So you can see the one from Lightroom really pops a little bit more. Let me open it on Lightroom here to show you what I did that was different from that one. And mainly the difference is that I managed to change the colors a little bit more selectively. I managed to change the cast that was all over the car from different reflections and everything. I managed to make radio filters and filters are something that is just amazing on Lightroom and Capture One Pro in which you can actually select specific areas of the picture that you want. So for example, I did some selective edits that were only affecting the car and some others that were affecting only outside of the car, mainly about what the background looked like and how distracting it was. So I managed to blur it a little bit more, take a little bit more of the saturation out. I managed to darken a little bit more this area here to brighten some specific parts of the car that I wanted to enhance. And this wouldn't even be the final picture. I didn't even go to Photoshop. And I'm gonna show you also now the other file, which is this one here. In comparison with this one, actually Capture One Express did really, really good. But there were two things that I missed. First was the color grading panel in which you can selectively add color to the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And one other that is quite obvious is that the perspective of the picture totally changed. So you can see that if I come back here to capture one, you can see the picture wasn't taken like frontal to this palace, but using the transform tool inside Lightroom, you can just change all the liners and everything, especially if you're doing real estate or something like that, because it really manages to correct the lines and the distortion of lenses in this case it wasn't exactly distortion it was just like the angle that was a little bit off and with this it just looks really really cool so i think these were the features that i was missing having graduated filters radio filters having a little bit of more power with the colors in the sense of having the specific individual channels on the curves for example having the software recognize all of my lenses and everything automatically so that i don't have to correct distortion or anything like that manually and of course, I missed also the possibility of editing different kinds of cameras and brands and everything. Since I have Sony cameras, I have some pictures from Leica, I have a Canon camera. So it can get a little bit boring if you have to change the license every time you want to do that. But still, I was really impressed because the final version on Capture One Express and the final version on Lightroom, even if they are quite different, you can see that the Capture One Express really arrived close to the point and just missed some final tools to be able to get that real 
pop. But if you're starting to add it, it's more than enough. All right, so after all this, what we're left with? In general, I really liked Capture on Express. It has enough features for you to get started with, of course, if you are a Sony, Fuji or Nikon user. And mostly when you're starting, these are the sliders and these are the tools that you're gonna use most frequently. I guess it's only when you develop a little bit more the eye for some pictures and trying to understand how someone did something specific is when you're gonna realize that you need some more tools, you need to be a little bit more selective about the editing, you need to change something a little bit more localized in the picture that you won't be able to do with this. And then you're gonna need to upgrade either to the pro version, to Capture One Pro, or another software like Lightroom, for example. But as I said before, subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be a massive comparison video very soon. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Leave in the comment section below any questions you have regarding Capture One Express and I'll answer them all. And also tell me which software do you prefer and which one should I feature here in the channel doing a comparison against all of these that I've tested already. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.